Hey everybody, welcome. I'm so excited really that I'm gonna work on this part right here. I've been all over this painting, but I wanted to show you this waterfall and how I'm going to get the water spilling over here. I'm looking at this photograph right here. Get a good glimpse of that. I'm gonna be working on this area there. So I've got some white titanium sunflower, some yellow ochre, phthalo green, ultramarine blue, black, and some orange oxide. Okay, now I'm just gonna take my little filbert rake, but you can use whatever's comfortable to you. You can use a little angle brush if you want, like this. Or you can start with your rake. Maybe I will start with the angle brush for the moment, just to get some of this white and get a direction going of where this water's gonna spill over here. So it's kind of coming down here and I wanna bring some of the eye, the, your sight down towards this area here. I wanna get a lot of foam, a lot of bubbling action. So I'm just kind of tap that in there. Of course, this is all dry. This is just a bunch of uh, burnt umber and orange oxide, yellow ochre. And of course, I've got some phthalo green, phthalo blues, ultramarine blues, blacks. But you can the, just kind of, I want to give you some tips on how you might fix up your own waterfall or just give you ideas. Just watching is helpful so that when you do start a painting, you'll kind of know, you can refer back to this. So I'm just kind of think about the bubbles coming up, splashing up from the water spilling off these rocks. This is all underwater here. So I'm going to, I don't want to cover all that really pretty color under there. So I'm just going really light with the top, just a soft, soft touch, just to kind of give myself an idea where, where that water is coming from that's splashing down here. There's a lot of water spilling over this to create that. So maybe some's coming down like this. Maybe there's some foam over here. It helps just to kind of draw it with the white. This water here is coming down like that. Some more light over here. Water's coming, coming down here. Spilling down, it's kind of deep there. Rushing down from here, spilling. Most of the action is right there where the water is spilling over this rock here. And then maybe there's some trail of paint, or I mean paint, water coming down from this action here. Lots of action over here. So some of that's coming down and a lot of the water is coming from over there and down and around here. And then I'll start adding color to it. Once I have established where I want most of my action, I want it to come down and bubble around over in here too. Like there's lots of, lots of action. It brings your interest down here, it makes something more interesting here. And for this particular painting, there's a lot of interest up top. So I want to pull a little spot of interest right here in this particular part of the painting. But hopefully you'll get something out of how I created this water to come down here 
Now I'm going to start adding just a little bit of phthalo green with the <coughs> or uh, with the um, yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of that orange, orange oxide to calm it, just to kind of get that color rocks showing through that water. And maybe I got a little too much green. I think I will go into my ultramarine blue. Maybe a little black in a minute. It's all about you want to create water, but yet you want to see through to the rocks. She's just kind of re-wetting those rocks that are already there. Squiggle them this way and then you come down and it hits the base there. I put too much thalo blue up here, I think, so I'm gonna bring in some more of those ultramarine blues. Maybe there's a little, little pool of depth right here, like deep in the water. You see down between the rocks under the water. Now I'm creating some wet transparent kind of a transparent color keeping that color of the rocks established in there and at the same time I kind of see a sheer light of water spilling now I'll, I'll, I'll work this over and over again and again until I get it how I want it I think I'm going to switch to my little filbert rake and I get more control. Maybe dip into my walnut oil a little bit just to get it to move, move better. Just pull that water back and forth. Just taking my time. I'm gonna put a little more ultramarine blue in there coming down there's some depth a little bit too much but that's okay I can just grab a little black blend that in again I'm seeing through the water into the deeper parts of the rock where it's really coming down off that little cliff I want to create a cliff where there wasn't one before these are, it's a big cluster of rocks under there and the water's just spilling off. Over here, there's more action because it's maybe hitting some other rocks under the water. Maybe a little bit of oxide. You can also take your fan brush, soft fan brush, and just sort of soften it. Sort of creates a little bit more sheer, flat up here, coming down. So it's like a transparency. Beautiful. And just continue to keep re adding the rock color under there. It's flat up here, so I'm going to go in this direction. leaving some little highlights, some little dark spots. Maybe the rocks are showing through right here. A little more. Now I just like to keep working it. Keep going back and forth over it. Maybe there's a little highlight, so I'll grab a little of that yellow ochre. Maybe the sun's hitting parts of the rock here. I like that. Maybe over here too. Just a little design in the rock, little cracks where it's dark. And then it's coming down over these rocks here. Back and forth with the oxide and the yellow ochre. Flat and pulling it down. Maybe I want a little bit more shadow 
grab that black. A little more shadow in the rocks here. Ultramarine blue. A little more depth here, and there's a little pit in the rocks there. And I'll just keep adding more ultramarine blue to these thalos, thalo greens and blues that I got too crazy with up there. Thalo green and thalo blue can be powerful colors. And the black always calms down your colors. Which makes them not so wild and fluorescent colored. I like this action here. Grab that ultramarine blue and black. Squiggle that. Just imagine how, just look at your photograph and photographs, plural, and just kind of decide where you want a lot of action coming down. There's maybe some rocks under here. Maybe this is a little shallower and it's hitting more rocks, which is causing more foam. You can go back and forth from your angle brush to this one, whatever feels right in your hand, whatever, however that paint moves around for you. I think I'm going to go to my angle brush again because I want a little stiffer brush right now in here just to create some more push that paint around a little better. Spilling there, it's getting shallow over here on this side. Hitting, hitting rocks underneath. All the while it's creating more and more patterns of color and foam. Maybe a little tiny bit of thalo green, not too much. Cause see, it can power. Power up those colors. No, not too much there. Maybe up in here a little bit. I'm using the tip of that angle brush just to kind of pop that color around. And maybe I want a little more rock showing through up here, so I'm going to go back to that oxide and put, put some rock under there, just to create more interest. And then it's going to, again, spilling off here, so it's going to get a little more darker right down in there in that pit where it's spilling over that rock. There's some shadow down there. And then I want to add a little more white to create a little bit of foam over right here. Start adding more white. Squiggle, squiggle. Squiggling it around. It's coming down and it's trailing off here. Maybe it's causing little bu bubbles there. Coming down. You can get as tedious or as not as tedious if you want. You can use a rough brush, but this is just the way I like to do it. Just, I like to create all that beautiful little details. That's why these paintings for me take a long time. This one has taken me quite some time, a couple months so far, just looking at it and <clears throat> studying it. And, Deciding where I want to put things, how it all comes together. That's why it's easier for me to create these little clips for you so that you can learn in it, every part of my painting that I think you can maybe pick up some 
some ideas on how to work it into your own. I'm going really tedious. I'm continuing to reload my brush because at this point I'm getting tedious into these little bubbles and areas where the water's kind of trickling. I'm twisting the brush. Maybe it's a little more transparent here and it's not getting so much detail. No. Sometimes it's hard for me to get really in there when I'm trying to show you because I have to get up and look at the painting. But I don't want to stop the filming, so I give you little bits and pieces in this way. Okay, over here, maybe there's some more tr water trickling down here. Little bubbles, little bubbles. Maybe here it hit the rock, hit a rock under there, and it's causing a little more action right there in that spot, and then it trickles down again. Just have to really study water sometimes and see how it moves. I'll be adding a lot of B roll in uh, creeks and rivers that I visit. So you can see those. Over here, I'm gonna get, let's see. There's some bubbles. Now be sure to watch the whole video on my YouTube channel so you can really see everything I've done in this painting and maybe there's spots that you would like to learn some things about. And then you can feel free to ask me. I'm here to help. It's just a constant figuring out where the most action is in the water and where the least action. Maybe some stuff coming down here, little bubbles. I'm going to twist the brush and just kind of tap it and then trail. Just let the brush work its beautiful <clears throat> little designs. All the while letting some of that rocks behind show through. Maybe there's a little more action here. Maybe just a few bubbles. It's coming over here. All the while I want to make sure I'm leaving those little spaces that I want rock to show through. Just trickling down, trickling down. Constant, constant. Spilling off. I'm going to switch to my angle brush again. Get a little more paint. And really pick up some action down here. Push, let the light really hit it. Right here where it's just hitting the bottom here of the rock pile. And then it will just continue to work that and work it and work it. Just tap it, grab it on the tip of the brush. Tap it around where you want more foam. getting really pretty. I have to get up in a minute to look at this because I can get carried away and not see where I'm going with the whole entire painting. But I hope you're getting something really good out of this. A 
foam and foam. And then it's maybe coming over here. I want some of that green water to show. forming the bubbles, tapping at them. Starting to look really good. Want some action up here a little bit to see where all that is coming from. It's going to trail off up here as I go up into the shadows some more. A little bit little patterns of bubbles that come out here, over there, and then all forming into your area here where the water is kind of settling and, and just laying there, all those bubbles. It's really what it is, that white water is a bunch of bubbles from so much action. Okay, I need to get up so I can look at this. I hope you got something out of it. And I will continue on with the whole entire painting. This will come down into more shadow as I come down. Really study your water and look at your painting from a distance. Okay, I'll see you soon.